So hi, everybody. Um, we are going to talk about a really important topic today, which is what can you do when you find yourself in quite a challenging experience in the middle of a breathwork session? How can you navigate that? Um, and I'm here with fellow breathwork coaches, Trevor and Abdel, um, to kind of get a few different perspectives on that. Um, and I think so in my view, if you obviously every experience is different, but uh, if you want to keep it really simple, there's basically two big types of challenging experiences. One is too little and one is too much. Right. So too little meaning that um, you're kind of bumping up against your defenses. You're not really managing to go underneath the surface. You're kind of, um, you you know, like not really going into the experience and too much being there's a whole lot coming up, maybe physical experiences, maybe uh, emotions, other sensations, and you feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, so maybe let's start with the too little with when you bump up against your defenses. Um, who wants to start? I can, well, I can well, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. No, no, it's all you, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have some experience with that. I, my first breathwork sessions, several of them actually ended up like, causing some severe cramping, which would go unresolved. So basically you cramp up, you keep cramping up, then you cramped up the whole time. And then there's pain after and nothing else would take place at least on a conscious level. The moment I was able to solve it for myself is when I uh, basically I started like focusing more on the body during the session, like just turning my attention to the body and feel if there is anywhere in the body or there's a spot that's not quite like the rest, like that just requires attention. And once I find that spot, I just send all the energy that I gather from the breath work, I send it to that spot. And from that day on, I, I was, I, I basically stopped having cramps altogether. And then you kind of get to more interesting states. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how I've experienced this myself. So basically put your attention on the bits that are starting yeah. to get there. Yeah, because one of the things, the, the feeling is that, so because you, you're you resisting the session basically, right? Or your defense mechanisms like pop up. So you keep accumulating this breathing and this energy and accumulating, and it's not going anywhere. It does like, because you're not guiding it and it's on its own, it will not go there. Once you start channeling it and giving it a target, that's basically, it essentially starts flowing. And when it flows, then, there's no cramps. I mean, one thing that I, lo I love about breathwork is that it's so cool because it, it, it transfers over to everyday life. And however we meet resistance in everyday life is how you relate to your breathwork. And, and, and breathwork like compresses these experiences into like an hour long. So I believe that like when we meet challenging uh, emotions or challenging experiences in our breathwork or where our energy stops, it's very parallel to how we meet challenges and and parts in real life and you know so what like what, what I like to think about is what do you actually do in this challenging moment in breath work how does that how is that similar to how you relate to life so I always like I mean the ideal situation is we get curious about it we get curious about this challenging situation like oh like why am I running into this you know and not making a right or wrong experience just like in life, when you read a, meet a challenging experience, a lot of the times what causes internal conflict is when we make it right or wrong. You know, you run into a challenging situation and then you're like, oh, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. Like you start making it a wrong thing. But when you can start to relate to it from a sense of I'm here, I'm uncomfortable. I wonder why, you know, you did that, that little switch of going from getting mad at it or being energetically charged towards it to bringing a curiosity to it to bringing a open hearted space of, huh, what is happening? And you're not making it a good or bad experience. You're just curious about it. And when we hold that curiosity to our energy blocks or the technique, which is the cramping, um, we can actually start to work with it and not against it. So we start to actually meet the discomfort. We get curious about the discomfort and then we can actually use it as an ally into our healing as opposed to making it an enemy to our healing. Yeah, absolutely. And I really love this idea of 
first of all, meeting your own coping mechanisms in the breathwork session, but also kind of practicing new ones, right? Like for example, this practicing your curiosity, practicing your openness also translates into everyday life. I think when you've done that enough, right? And, and I, I do want to, want to preface that it is, it's way easier just to say it than it is to do it yes. because, you know, like it's, you can do like, ideally that's where we want to be, but it is very hard to, to hold genuinely hold that curiosity. And that's where like the developmental work comes in with breath work and personal development and all that stuff. Yeah. And I think it's really nice to have that in the back of your head though, right. To kind of, you know, that, you know, you have it somewhere where you can call it up and see how it goes that time, basically. Um, my feeling is also that, so this openness can kind of go two ways, depending on how strong your defenses are in that moment, right? So either you go like, okay, I trust myself, I trust the process, go where the fear is, right? Go where the tension is, go where the fear is, you know, trust yourself to go in, right? That's when the defenses are not so strong. Then, you know, like kind of go like, okay, I wonder what's behind this defense, right? Let me see if I can you know, slip past this basically with this openness and curiosity. But I think what also helps, and um, I think, for example, for really strong cases like what Abdel uh, described, um, that can be better in that moment is to not go like, oh, I want to get past these defenses, but like actually to start talking to these defenses, right? To say, okay, why are you here? What are you trying to keep me safe from? And actually engage on that level right not try to go like oh so annoying that i'm cramping again or so annoying that you know i have these thoughts but actually go okay clearly you're trying to protect me what what are you trying to do right um what's your function and then make the session all about these defense mechanisms and those are sometimes like a little bit hard work these sessions but they're incredibly useful i find incredibly valuable um i remember one session so i've generally had more of the problem of too much than too little <laughs> um but um i've had one session where i was really stuck where every time i would start breathing deep i would fall asleep it was the weirdest thing so literally every 10 seconds i would have a few deep breaths i would stop breathing and just fall asleep um and i was really frustrated it was pretty much at the beginning i was like oh why is this happening and then in hindsight i realized that i was touching topics that were a bit too much for me at that time and basically my system was shutting down because it was going like, this is not the time, I can't do this right now. And so in hindsight, I was actually really grateful that it happened that way. So it's, I think it's really important to value your defense system also, you know, not necessarily- I think that's it, so cool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's so cool because it actually makes you aware that there's things too intense to deal with. Yeah. You know, like, it, it's like, it's like, hey, this is too much for you to deal with. Maybe we should just fall asleep instead. So I think that's a really cool message to be like, now is not the time, but look at it in the future. So it gives us a tool. It's, it's like a tool to what to work on um, as the more and further we develop. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like your defense mechanisms, as you also said, they're not your enemies. They're your allies, sometimes a bit misguided. So, you know, there definitely needs to be a conversation sometimes, but they're not your enemies. I think that's really important. Cool. Uh, shall we talk a bit about too much? Uh, yes. Yeah, like uh, too, too much as in like too much, too much energy. Yeah, too much energy, too much... too much emotion, too much sensations, just too much of everything. You can start, Abdel. I think I have, I have to construct my thoughts around that. Okay, you you won't have much uh, much time because I will be extremely <laughs> short about this one. Um, yeah. So, from a personal perspective, it has never happened to me like to experience too much. Uh, I think, yeah, by default, my defense mechanisms like know how to keep me safe from feeling too much. Right. Actually, most of my work is about feeling more. So. I'll just give it an outlet about it. okay let's scream or let's uh, let's hit the mattress that's kind of that's what I would do when I see someone having that kind of experience but personally I can't really say much about it um, yeah I think I think when, when I hear too much I I think of overwhelm mm -hmm. um so you know how do how do we again I'll take it back to to life it's like how do we deal with overwhelm in our everyday life and then when we get overwhelmed in a breathwork session how do we deal with that uh, you know one of the questions that I that I ask my clients regularly in in one on one sessions 
is, is it okay to be feeling this? And that, that right there is, is, you know, gives you a pretty black and white answer of like, I don't want to be feeling this. No. And it's like, okay, you, cause you want to ensure that the work is safe and you want to ensure that we're, we're treading in safe territory and we don't want to go, you know, bypass defenses or not honor what the system is trying to tell us. So internally, if, if you if there's a sense of overwhelm, um, the first question to lead with for me is, is it okay to be feeling this? And if there's an intrinsic, no, back off a little bit, you know, take it easy, start return your breath to normal regroup, be like, okay, what was that? What just happened? Cause obviously those, those questions should naturally come. Um, but if you're in a state of, you know, wanting to be challenged or wanting to go deeper and it's like, yeah, it's, t I, I get why I'm feeling this and it's okay and it's safe and I know I'm going to be okay. Then, then meet it and, and see what happens as you meet that edge, as you meet that overwhelm, um, you know, as well, in life, when I start to get overwhelmed now, I, I have a good somatic experience in my body. So I, I can tell when I'm starting to get overwhelmed. Um, it's, it's what can I, when I, when I meet overwhelm in life, it's what can I take off my plate right away to not like, what, what do I, what boundaries do I have to set? What do I have to say no to, to get rid of the overwhelm? Cause it, usually it's because I've said yes to too many things. There's too much going on. So when you're in the breath work and you're feeling completely overwhelmed, what is making you overwhelmed? What boundary can you set? Maybe you need to breathe a bit slower. Maybe you need to bring your thought pattern in a different direction. Maybe you need to release into it a little bit more, or a little bit less, um, and just put up one boundary with yourself to uh, lessen that overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think also here, there's kind of two different ways to go. And that's, I mean, why it's awesome if you can to have a guide, because hopefully a good guide in the moment would kind of feel which type of overwhelm you're in, right? Um, or like explore that with you. I think one type of overwhelm is that basically you're going into an intense process, um, but your head, your conscious self goes like, oh no, oh no, right? Um, and that's one thing where you can see, can you just tell yourself, trust yourself, trust your system that it doesn't bring things up if you're not able to deal with them. Right? Because I think that does generally happen that if it's too much, your system will actually close those things off. So if they're coming up, you can usually trust that you can deal with those things. Right, That's one thing is to kind of relax into the process, trust yourself. Right, That's the thing when your conscious self kind of goes into overwhelm. I think um, that can be helpful to trust yourself that you can actually handle this. But then there's the other type of overwhelm. And um, I think I mentioned this in another video, but the way I would define that is when you lose your center, right? For example, you might have, you know, traumatic memories coming up or very big emotions or, you know, stuff in your body that really like feels very intense and you lose your center of who am I right now? And that um, as a guide, if I was there, I would try to ground you, right? I would kind of, you know, like literally physically ground you in the body, go like keep feeling your body or go like who is feeling this, right? To keep you in your center, right? But that can be hard to do when you're on your own in a session. And so I would try to have this feeling of, you know, are you basically just being swept away by something, by an emotion or can you still feel yourself? If you can still feel yourself, I think you can trust yourself to go into it. If you're starting to lose yourself, that would be the point where I would say, breathe a bit slower, go back to the basics, right? Maybe don't jump into this, especially if you're all on your own, because that can be really uncomfortable. Um, that Then you're left with a lot of stuff to integrate afterwards. Um, so yeah, and that can also be actually your, your physical like body center, like, you know, kind of on your belly, place a hand on your belly and go like, okay, am I still here? Am I still feeling this? Am I still in the now or am I, for example, being sucked back into the past? I think these are kind of the general puzzle pieces, but of course in each session, you then have to decide where are you at at this moment. And that takes some time, I would say. That's why also, I mean, we've all said that solo sessions are easier to do when you're a bit experienced because then you can make those decisions, right? Like, am I safe to go here or is that genuinely too much to ask of myself at this point, right? And so these decisions are always a bit sensitive. And again, it takes a lot of curiosity 
a lot of sort of feeling into yourself to figure that out. Cool. Um, I don't know, anything else we can say about navigating difficult experiences? Um, well, say, uh, is, do, do you put tetany in, in that category? I would say so, yes. Yeah, so with, with I mean, I, you know, I've ex I don't think I've gone through one session without experiencing tetany, and I find it so freeing slash uncomfortable. It's like the most, like, it's, it, it's like, uh, what, what's that? Uh, pain is pleasure. I can't remember the thing. Anyway, it's like <laughs> the most uncomfortable, like, like beautiful experience ever. So when, when I meet tetany, like it's, it's where your muscles cramp and they get really tight. And it's like, if, if there's any, you know, when I was younger, I used to drink a lot. And then when you'd wake up at like two in the morning with like a calf cramp and <laughs> it's just like the most painful thing in the world. Um, after a night of like hard drinking or something, it's like, it's, it, that can like happen all over your body. Um, and, and yeah, I, I like every time I've met it, there's always been such like a deep experience like that comes out of nowhere like blindsides me of like holy shit you're trying too hard in life like just mm -hmm. stop trying so fucking hard you know and I find that when those experiences come in learning to recognize for me this is this is very personal I mean maybe people can resonate with this but maybe it's a piece of information but when I meet it it's basically a sign I'm working too hard and not listening to the rest of my body and that's a sign to be like okay back off like take it easy you're trying to be too much you're trying to perform too hard you're trying to be too much for someone else um and it's not honoring my myself and what my needs are uh when i get to tetany so uh it's always a very beautiful experience to meet that and kind of come back into myself and have some compassion for myself so i think that's uh that's also really really beautiful and, and like i said i mean that's just a very personal experience i don't think that everybody's going to have that same psychological uh, train of thought as they meet it. But um, I think that also when you do meet it, regardless, this, this would be for everybody. When you do meet Tetany, just breathe into it. And, and, you know, if you need to go harder into it or softer into it, only you know that, but just get curious about it. What does it need? Do you need to back off? Do you need to dive in? Um, but generally speaking, it is a sign that you do need to, just take a little bit of a back seat there and just kind of slow your breathing down, regulate the oxygen in your body so that you don't run into hypoxia and cramp up that's, all your muscles. I think that's really beautiful actually. And I really think you're not at all like alone with this, right? I mean, Abdel also has had it obviously, right? But I've, I have to say, I've seen it a lot and more often than guys actually. And I feel like in guys, it was a lot related to this, okay, I'm going to power through this, I'm going to go all the way in kind of this mentality, right? And then the step, you know, not always, there's all sorts of different ways of cramping also, but, you know, a lot of the time, what it really took was the step of stepping back into your vulnerability, right? Like mm. stepping back and I saying, like okay, you know, go gently, you don't have to push through a defense, right? You can meet it and like go through it softly, right? And um, I think I think that's yeah. like the ultimate sign of meeting your edge. Hmm. You know, it's like it's like you hit that wall, and it's like you it's really, you can't really go past that. It's like it's like there's it's like you can't push past that. It it, it like stops you dead in your tracks, where you're like, huh, like I need to take it back. So that's yeah. kind of and like you said, like meet your vulnerability, right? Meet that part of you that's like I can't go on anymore. Yeah. Yes. Good thought yeah. there. Yes. If I if I may, I see it quite differently actually. Ah. It's very interesting to see yeah, the the different perspectives on this. For me, I see it as like like the most superficial thing that can happen in a session. <laughs> um, and it what it represents to me and so to some of the people I've seen is just this like basic idea that you're in, you're in control. And you want to stay in control. Mm. And in the session, the breathing after like 10 minutes, you're not going to be in control anymore. Uh, but if you keep cramping up, if you keep like preventing the energy from doing what it's supposed to do, you're still in control, but now you're in control of your pain. And then I wouldn't, I personally never stop breathing when I have uh, tetany. Uh, and it goes away when I decide that I'm not in control anymore. 
so from, if I do two sessions in a day, the second session when I relax into it, there's no tetany again, or if it's like on the weekend or whatever, the tetany comes at first because I'm like, I'm in you know, my daily life and I want to be in control. It comes and then it goes and it doesn't come back actually. What if I let do you, go of do you shift? Do you shift your breathing pattern though? Like, do you do you slow your breathing down or speed up, or do you just you no. just don't change your breathing pattern so at all? The, and that's that's another thing that I think for uh, for people, it's always some of the things we say depend also on which breathing technique you might use. Uh, in mm. it, for me, I've, uh, for for the stuff that you know brings up like big experiences, I've, it's I've only used connected breath work. And we take a rhythm and then we usually stick to it, right? More or less. I mean, once you're gone and whatever, you're not conscious anymore. What happens, happens. But as long as you're present and controlling your breathing, then it's a, yeah, it's a, a bit slower than that. Uh, and that's it. And then you just keep going. But I think that's really interesting because that sounds, for example, like for you, the cramping really represented your armor, right? Yeah, it's, it's like it's your course, psychological uh, yeah, and physical yeah. armor. Yeah. And that's a really interesting thing to engage with. And also now you have a sign of like, is my armor on or off? Right. Exactly. So basically you already have made friends with this. Right. And I think for people who breathe at home, you know, depending on where you're at in your process with your breath work, that can be really important to know, right. That basically yeah. the cramping tells you something about, where your defense systems are at, right? And maybe can tell you something about how you're treating yourself. And that's really important to engage with, right? To not just keep pushing through and pushing through without no. like really feeling into it, right? Yeah. Um, Another way yeah. to represent it is actually um, the cramping is not something that happens. It's actually something that is revealed by your breath work. That's the tension that was there in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's oh, actually a nice one. one. I like yes. that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I think that's very true. I feel that too, that, you know, the tension was already there and the breathing really puts energy on it. And so it becomes much stronger, but the tension yeah. was mm -hmm. there yeah. and it means something. It's not just because, oh, if I only didn't breathe, everything would be fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You're making, you're making me want to go purposefully get into tetany now so I can explore it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, right. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say that, but you know, I think that's very powerful. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Right. So these were our thoughts on how you can navigate different types of challenging breathwork experiences. Um, I hope it's helpful for you. Um, and as always, if you have any more questions or comments or things to add, you're very welcome to do that below. Um, we're always really curious to see what you guys are thinking. Uh, and apart from that, uh, hope to see you in the next video. Happy breathing.